Welcome to Bite-Sized Bushcraft, a series of videos and articles to teach bushcraft and survival skills and manageable chunks. I'm Castle from bushcraftforkids.co.uk. Before you start tying these knots, there's a few things that you're going to need. Firstly, you're going to need some string or some rope. This is paracord. I also have another piece here, which is uh, another piece of rope that is just a general purpose rope, uh, which you can get from most outdoor outlets. Um, I'll put a link to it below so that you can find out where to get this sort of rope from if you would like to. Uh, but before we start, there's a few other things that might make learning these knots just that little bit easier. Firstly, is when you're starting, especially if you're teaching children, you'll find that if you start to put the left end over here or the right end over here, they get confused. Also, they can get confused with which end of the work rope they're actually working with. So to make it a little bit easier, just get a little bit of coloured tape and tie it and wrap it around one end so it distinguishes one end from the other so they can easily see what they're doing. Once they get competent in tying the knot, you can then take it off and you can practice or the child can practice without the tape. The other thing that... Uh, I recommend which is especially useful when you're coming to tie a bowline is to have uh, something like a carabiner that you're going to actually tie the knot onto. The reason being is that when you tie these knots generally you're in a purpose where in a situation where you've got a purpose and so one end of the rope with a bowline is probably going to be up a rock face somewhere so you've only got access to one, one end and you're going to be fastening it to something like a carabiner, a harness or whatever. So to have something to tie it to makes it a lot easier. It doesn't need to be a carabiner, it can be anything. I've got a leather bracelet here, you could use that. Just so you've got something to be able to tie it onto. Otherwise what you get, especially with knots, for example with reef knots, when you're just doing something simple like an all round and you only want it keeping loose, a child will pull it tight like that and you don't want them to. Where if they're tying it round something, they can't tie it into a, an overhand knot. They've got to keep it more open like that as if they were tying a shoelace. Okay, so let's get started with the ball line. This is the ball line knot. It's a very strong knot that's uh, used a lot with climbing along with the figure of eight knot. They're the two main knots that uh, people use when they're climbing. And it's very good for just fastening a length of rope onto something. And so, that's the knot tied. What we're going to do now is go through how we tie it. Right, so firstly, as I said, one end's going to be somewhere else fastened onto something, whether it's up a crag, up a rock face or whatever. And so we're going to put one end of the rope out of the way. The other end, which has got my green tape on, is here. I also have my carabiner that I'm going to fasten it onto, which will be on my harness. And to start off with, you need to make a loop. So what I always say to people is if you put your hand away from you so that your thumb is away from you and twist you will make your loop like that so I'll show you again if you've got your thumb away from you or your thumb behind the rope and you twist away you'll make a loop it's important you do it that way because if you look here the rope that goes off up the crag is underneath the end that you're working with. And so you make your loop, again, thumb at the bottom, twist up the rope that's going away from you is underneath. <laughs> right, next the thing that you want to fasten it onto. So what we're going to do, we're just going to thread this through there so it's ready to fasten on. Then all you're going to do is go up the hole and then the rope that goes up the crag 
or where wherever it's going to be secured you're going to go underneath that and then back down the hole again and then you just pull the rope tight and there you have a ball line fastened onto your carabiner. So we'll go through that again and we'll try and do it in simple stages. Uh, some people use little stories about going under logs and up rabbit holes and things when they're learning these knots. And so here's what uh, we sometimes use with uh, cubs, scouts, beavers is that you take the rope, remember, thumb down and on top and twist the rope. So you're making a rabbit hole. What you're going to do then is thread the end through whatever you're going to fasten it onto and you're going to come up the rabbit hole. The rope that's going away up the cliff is your log and you're going to go under the log. You can see there. Once you've gone under the log, you're going to go back down the rabbit hole. So we're going back down the rabbit hole. And then if we pull on the rope at the top there, pull away from us, we'll tighten up into a ball line. It's quite a distinctive knot. It looks very similar to a reef knot except you've got a rope coming out to the side here and the only difference being if you were using this knot what you would do is put something called a stopper knot down here but that there is your ball line so once again just so everything's clear you take the rope then the working end is nearest to me the end that's going up the crag or that's going to be secured somewhere is away from me. My thumb goes underneath and I grip the rope and I twist the rope to make my rabbit hole. With the rabbit hole, as you can see, I'll show you here, the rope which is going away is underneath on the loop. And that's very important. Then what we're going to do, we're going to come up the rabbit hole, sorry, fasten it onto what we want to fasten it onto, and up the rabbit hole, underneath the log, which is the rope which is going away from us, and then back down the rabbit hole, and then pull it tight. And there, as you can see, give you a close up so you can see what it looks like when it's tied. That is your ball line. Okay, the next knot that we're going to look at is a reef knot, which uh, I'm sure many people have seen. It's a knot that everybody seems to be taught when they're a child, uh, especially if they're involved in cubs scouting or. Uh, or if you're doing a first aid course and you're learning to tie a knot for um, fastening a bandage on or uh, a sling and so you would use a reef knot. One of the reasons is it's flat and so it will rest against someone and it's not going to rub too much. It's easier to tie, it's easy to tie and it's a secure knot as well. So again we've got one length of rope and we've got our piece of tape on one, hand, one end. We're going to put that in our left hand. It doesn't matter, it can be in your right hand, but if we put it in our left hand, it's just the traditional way that this knot is taught to be tied. And what we're going to do is take the left hand and put it over the top of the other piece, the other end of the rope. So you're just making a cross. Then you're going to take the left end and just wrap it underneath as if you're tying your shoelaces. And make a knot 
pull it so you've got a little bit of rope at either end and so it, at this point it's just like tying your shoelace you've gone left over right and then just wrapped it round next you're going to take the green end again which now will be in your right hand again it goes over the top of the left so it's right over left this time under as if you're tying your shoelaces again and you pull it tight and you will see there that is a reef knot so a knot that most people recognize in America it's called a square knot and as you can see it slips together and locks together like this one thing that identifies the reef knot from other knots is that these two ends here, the two loose ends, are both on the same side of the knot. If you get one on this side and one on this side down here, then it's not a reef knot, it's actually called a thief knot then, which is another knot completely. Okay, so we'll do that again, and I'll show you this time with a slightly shorter piece of rope, so I can show you another method for teaching uh, children to do it or you can use it for yourself there's no need for it to be done and what you need is your foot and what we're going to do is get the rope and put it so we've got both ends again put the green end uh, the end with the tape on in your left hand and what we're going to do is put our foot in the middle of the rope move my shoe let's say the way and then what we're going to do is, again, make a cross with the left over right. So left goes over right, as you can see there. And then all we're going to do is wrap it underneath as if we're tying our shoelaces. And so as you can see, you can't tie it into a very tight knot. You're tying it onto your boot, so it makes it a little bit easier. The end with the tape on is now in our right hand. And so we're going to go right over left. When we go right over left, as you can see, it's formed a little hole here. So it's right over left, and as if we tied a simple overhand knot, and then we pull it tight. And there, as you can see, we've got a reef knot. So what I'll do, I'm just going to show you some of the problems that you get when children, are especially, are learning to tie this knot. And the problem is, they will get it, and... When you say left over right, they'll put it over the top like this. And when you say wrap it round or pass it through, they don't go round like this. They don't go round and bring it up underneath in the loop. What they'll do, very often I've seen them and they get it and they start wrapping it round here. Which obviously it's never going to tie a knot. It's just going to, you know, it just coils your rope up a little bit. So... By putting it round your boot, or around something, you could use anything, a piece of wood, um, you could use a mug if you wanted, or a plastic cup, anything at all that you can tie the knot round. That stops them, that when they do understand that it's like tying a shoelace, and they wrap it round, by putting the left over the right and wrapping it round, they can't just keep pulling it and pull it into a or overhand knot because the overhand knot if they tie it like that they can't tie a reef knot then they've pulled it too tight so to prevent that from happening if we use something to tie it round and then put it in front of them so it's left over right and wrap it underneath and pull it tight they can pull it tight because they can't pull it into an overhand knot then we'll take the right hand and put that over the top and then we'll wrap it up through the hole that we've created and pull it tight and we've got a reef knot or a square knot depending whether you're in England or America and what we'll call it and so you know there's a few tips for you put a, a marker on one end of the tape of the rope, sorry, for when you're learning, because 
it, it helps you to keep an eye on the end that you're working with and for children it helps them understand the left from the right so when you're actually teaching the reef knot and you go left over right you can actually start by teaching it that it's left over right but it's the green goes over the top and underneath and then you can see the green is now in the right hand so green goes over the top again and you wrap it up through the hole and pull it tight and you've got your reef knot and so you can do left over right then right over left or you can do green over the top then green over the top again which is exactly the same but if you are going to do that what I would say is also teach them the left over right, right over left or right over left, left over right it basically you use one side then the other I hope that is uh, clear enough for you but I'll show you again just how tight but this time I'll find something different to show you you can use anything to tie it onto all we're going to do is we've got this coil of tape here and we've got our green in the left hand so it's left over right green over the top wrap it round as if we're tying our shoelaces and pull it tight now the right in our right hand is the green so this time it is right over left green always goes over the top and then wrap it round as if we're tying our shoelaces and pull it tight and by doing that you get this very distinct knot which is the reef knot or square knot whichever name you want to use for it very quickly there is another way of tying this knot which uh, my understanding is that it is the traditional way of tying the knot and so I'm going to quickly show you that but I'm not going to go into a lot of depth with it but basically you make make a loop so if you can see I'm using I'm not using my working end which has got the green tape and I'm using the other end and I've made the loop and I've got this bit here the end bit is on my side and so what we're going to do is we're going to come up the hole we're then going to go from up the hole I've got this end nearest to me still so we're going to go around the opposite way we're going to go away from me back round and then back down the hole so we're going to come up round the back of the rope underneath the bit that we've got wrapped over and then back down the hole that we came up from and then you just pull it tight as you can see this end and this end are both on the same side of the knot so when you're doing this and you make your loop this time I'll do it with the green end just to try and show you the green side is nearest me this green side is nearest me then I take the opposite end of the rope the bit that's not got any tape on and if I've got this green side nearest me I'm going to come up the hole round and underneath the loop there and then back down the hole then I'm going to just get hold of all four pieces here and pull it tight and as you can see it ties the reef knot and both, both are on the same side just so that you can see as well what we will do I'll make the loop as you can see I've put it with the, the green piece of tape is on my side it's nearest to me but this time I'm going to tie it wrong so I'm going to come up the hole I'm going to bring it nearest to me so I can go underneath the loop so I've gone the opposite way around and in doing that I then go back down the hole so I've done exactly the same as tying the reef knot but except I've done it back to front instead of going away from this end and underneath I've come towards me and underneath and as you can see these are on the opposite sides, they're on diagonal ends 
And so that there is called a thief knot. And it was used by sailors to uh, tie up their, their bags because it looked so like a reef knot they could tell if someone had been in their bag. So that's just so that you know what it looks like if you've got it wrong uh, to tie it. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. I hope that's helpful in how to tie your knots and that uh, you can learn. But just remember, have something to tie it onto. That makes it easier, whether it is a carabiner, uh, just some sort of loop that you've got, whether it's a mug, a mug handle, anything can be used. Secondly, make sure that you've got some tape that you put on one end of the rope, which distinguishes the working end for you, and that helps make it easier for when you're learning to tie these knots. So thank you for your time. If you've found this useful and uh, you like the videos, please Subscribe to the channel and click like, uh, it helps my videos, um, but also as well as uh, doing that, if you can leave a comment below about anything or anything that you would like to see an article in Bite Size Bushcraft about, or if you have any comments about any knots, or anything at all, put it below and I will try and answer them either in an article or in a video, and we'll slowly start adding to these videos with more bite-sized bushcraft.